Sarah. Hi, my name is Joe Seckel. I'm an architect in DCS, and I am uh, responsible for the PowerEdge C410X architecture. And uh, one of the questions that I get often asked is how does our approach of uh, having the remote GP GPUs connected over uh, cable back to the server node, how does that compare and impact performance uh, for these GP GPU applications versus, say, an approach where you're simply embedding a couple of GP GPUs right in the same chassis with a server? And uh, unfortunately, the answer to that one is uh, at an application layer somewhat unknown. And the reason I say that is because uh, a lot of these GPGPU applications are uh, kind of homegrown, hand-tuned. Um, there's a lot of variability. There's unfortunately no one bedrock uh, uh, benchmark to run and say, aha, you know, here, here, this, this approach is 5% higher or lower than the other approach. Um, so, so what we have to do then is kind of double click down a layer and look at things like PCI Express bandwidth uh, as, a, as a potential indicator for um, how that might impact the GP GPU performance and its ability to get data and transfer results back to the host. So with that as, a, uh, as kind of a problem statement, I'm going to shift away from the tougher question of you know, what's the absolute impact on my GP GPU application. Um, which, at the end of the day, I'd recommend go get a C410X and give it a spin and see what, uh, what performance you get. I'm going to shift to talk a little bit more about um, how, how this works with the PCI Express by 16 plumbing that we have all the way from the, the chipset in our server, like the 6100, all the way down to the uh, GPGPU that would plug into a, a C410X chassis. All right. So uh, what I've drawn out here is kind of the network, if you will, or topology of the PCI Express between the server and the uh, GP GPU down here in one of the modules. Uh, one thing to take note of is that all of the links from the North Bridge all the way down to GP GPU are all constructed with by 16 uh, links. In other words, 16 lanes per link. Is consistent. I mean, that's a uh, constant pipe diameter, if you will, all the way from uh, the server down to the GP GPU. The uh, again, Gen two. So, so let's do a little bit of theoretical calculation on what by sixteen Gen two gives you from a data transfer bandwidth. Uh, Gen two on a single lane in a, in a direction can clock at 5 uh, gigatransfers per second. And uh, the reason I say gigatransfers as opposed to something that's representative of a, a bit or a byte, in other words, a, a datum, is because to maintain the clocking on that link, uh, they use a scheme called 8B10B to, uh, to achieve the clock encoding, which means that uh, you have some inefficiency, you have to back out 20%. Which leaves you to actual four gigabits. And probably should have a B here, a small B, four gigabits per second. Uh, however, when you're talking about going to 16 lanes as opposed to one, uh, you multiply that out and you get 64 gigabits per second. But we're interested in bytes, divide by eight, and that's going to give you eight gigabytes per second. So, in a direction on a by 16 Gen 2, your max theoretical bandwidth is a uh, 8 gigabyte per second uh, lane or link. However, that's deceiving because the uh, truth is in a system where you have buffers and, and state machines and everything else going on, and, and especially in this topology where you may be setting up a, a, a switching into a virtual circuit that allows this uh, route to talk to this device, but then you're going to tear that virtual circuit down and establish a new one between, say, this route and one of these other devices. There's some overhead associated with, with setting up and tearing down those, those uh, virtual switch circuits. So the um, reality is you have some amount of overhead that, again, is going to vary on an application to application basis. We'll just, for the sake of argument, say that you have 8 minus that overhead x. 
is what you can actually uh, achieve at any one point in time, so your instantaneous uh, peak bandwidth that, that a device might actually achieve in terms of transferring from the north bridge down to uh, the GPGPU. Now, in the situation where I have four GPGPUs, a ratio of one to four, then what you might see is um, uh, each one of these devices first order having relatively same time slices on that by 16 link so we can make an argument that again first order you take this max bandwidth and you divide it by four because it's being sh sh shared across four devices if the overhead was just let's say for the sake of argument zero and we were really talking about eight gig then it would be eight divided by four or, or each device would see an average of two gigabytes per second. Now the reality is when when the the circuit is set up between the north bridge and a particular device, that device will see that full max bandwidth minus the overhead at any one point in time. So it's a it's it's an important point to to, to make that the uh, the GP GPUs when they have when they have that circuit established between them and the server will see that full bandwidth available to them and again on average if you want to kind of average this out it would be more of an average of whatever that peak bandwidth is divided by the number of devices that you're going to share that link. Now the, the sharing of this PCI Express link is again something that's very dependent upon the application, the code, uh, the data set. Typically the way the GPGPU uh, customers go about looking at their problem is they have a certain size data set that they're trying to get, uh, trying to calculate on and, and get to, you know, an answer, obviously, in an accelerated manner. Uh, they look at the GPGPUs available to them, what the frame buffer, in other words, how much memory resides on that GPGPU. Let's say that they have, uh, um, you know, 64 gig of uh, a data set. The uh, GPGPU might have 4 gigabyte frame then first order they may you know, take 4 into 64 and say, okay, I need, I need to split my data set out across 16 GP GPUs. Uh, whatever that ratio ends up being, they now have a, some first order number that says, here's how many GP GPUs I need to tackle this data set. Then the next question becomes, all right, how many GP GPUs uh, do I ratio against a given server node? That is, uh, that, that is a little trickier. What they, what they do is they look at this timeline from, all right, uh, it's, uh, for the first portion of this timeline, I need to transfer data from the server down to the GPGPU. I crunch the data in the GPGPU, and then I, and then I harvest the results. The uh, greater of this timeline, the greater percentage that you have here in the calculation means that... Um, I am less sensitive from a GPGPU perspective. The GPU GPU is less sensitive to the uh, the, date, the bandwidth available to it on this link. Translation: the greater percentage of this calculation phase is, then in theory you can share that link across more GPGPUs. Now again, ignoring a lot of effects of the code running on a server, which may dictate another ratio. But uh, again, looking here, you can uh, kind of depend depends on if if this is a shorter duration or short lower percent of that overall timeline, then that would suggest that maybe that GP GPU is going to be more sensitive to the to the bandwidth available to it, and will want to share that bandwidth across fewer GP GPUs on that same link. The analogy I like to use is uh, a, a bucket brigade where you're putting out a fire. If you think about someone there with a hose running at full, uh, full tilt, the uh, line of people with their buckets that come in, you fill up the bucket, that person goes off, puts the water in the fire, the next person's same thing, and so on and so forth. If you, you have to walk several feet to go put the fire out, then that means that you have a fair amount of time between when you need to uh, fill up your, your bucket again. And so you can have more people with buckets in that line. 
if, however, you fill up your bucket, you turn around, and you dump the water right away, get back in line, that means you can have, you need fewer, or you can afford to have, uh, uh, you need fewer folks in line uh, to keep that process going. So that's kind of the analogy, and that's how uh, we determine that uh, the by 16 could be shared across some number of TPGPUs.